tiny Manipur tucked away in the mountains of northeast India has always felt cut off from the Indian mainstream. There's always been a quest here for a strong counterculture. But Bollywood is banned in Manipur, is banned in Manipur by insurgent groups fighting the Indian government who believe that it's a corrupting influence. Mainly militarized territory, that is the occupied territory of India. It's surprising that they're looking for inspiration from a country that's a little further. Do you all like Korean movies? Yeah, we all do like Korean movies. They're great. It's about love and all those things related to relationship and it's growing up fast though. It's growing up like fire in Manipur also. Walk into any market and you'll come across DVD shops such as this one, dotting every street corner. And they're all selling Korean movies and dramas which have become incredibly popular here, especially among young people. On October 15, 1949, the newly formed Manipur Legislative Assembly and the legally elected Council of Ministries were disbanded through an executive order and Manipur became a part of the Indian subcontinent. This perceived undemocratic manner in which the sovereign state of Manipur was merged into the dominion of India and the struggle that ensued to regain its lost sovereignty is at the root of the political unrest and subsequent armed conflict in the state. A pertinent question that is very much related with the human right, uh, this violation. But all types of this human rights violation that is being done by security forces in our Manipur. For instance, killing, torture, raping, disappearance, fact encounter, everything that is done by them. A typical case of this failure was evident in the Hirangoitong massacre, where Central Reserve forces fired indiscriminately at a crowd of 3,000 people who were watching a volleyball match. 15 innocent people died and 31 were injured in the bloodbath. People live insecure lives with security forces who fail to differentiate the civil populace from armed insurgents. Civil rights are grossly violated and people live in constant fear, reinforced by the overwhelming military presence in the state with their display of sophisticated weapons, armored vehicles and foreign looks and languages. Armed forces are given sweeping powers by the Armed Forces Special Powers Act 1958. This act is the evil reincarnate of the British colonial law, Armed Forces Special Powers Ordinance 1942, which was promulgated at the wake of Japanese aggression in the Second World War. Under this ordinance, a responsible military officer not below the rank of a captain could commit extrajudicial murder. However, in the case of the Act of 1958, which is actively resorted to in the Northeast Indian states like Manipur, even a non-commissioned officer of the lowest rank is empowered to commit extrajudicial murder. Section 4 of the Act empowers the officer to undertake arrests without warrants, destroy any shelter, enter and search any premises without warrant, or shoot to kill on the basis of their opinion that it is necessary to do so to maintain public order. Moreover, Section 6 of the Act provides legal protection to those who exercise this power under this Act so much that the armed forces are abusing the powers with impunity, leading to large-scale violations of human rights. Because of this, how this accumulated discontentment of the people, now the youngsters, based on a very, uh, this uh, political ideology, they launched armed struggle and it demanded independence. What is Manipuri identity and culture, tattoos to fashion style, even hairstyling? It's not just the movies, there's now an affinity for anything Korean among young Manipuris.
Korean fashion is popular here, and they come to ask us for latest hairstyles. Many people here say they fight to and connect to Korean culture, and they believe that physically they resemble the Koreans and East Asians a lot more than they do the Indians. 